Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today, I am continuing on with the X-Men animated series of reviews, or the X-Men catalog of reviews, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I'm continuing on with that today. And this was a paid request from Clarson, who wanted me to take a look at the, not only the 90s X-Men cartoon, that's what I always call it, and he also wanted me to review X-Men Evolution, which I will do next. Um, but yeah, these were the two paid requests that he wanted me to knock out, and I figured, talking about these, might as well talk about the Pride of the X-Men, the, the pilot that they did, and then Wolverine and the X-Men as well, because hey, let's, let's keep a good thing going, and we'll... Uh, get all of our X-Men animated stuff out of the way in one go. Um, but I, again, I always I always just call it the 90s X-Men cartoon. I've always called it that. I know it's just called X-Men, but I like to put my spin on things, as you guys very well know at this point. Now, I do agree with a lot of people that say this is a classic, because it is. Um, but... I think that a lot of people only say that and they don't really mean it because as I was watching through this show, there's a lot of these episodes that people never talk about. A lot of these stories that people don't jump into. I think that a lot of people kind of jump on the bandwagon with this cartoon and they don't really know what they're talking about. They just say it because, oh, it came out in the 90s and it's got a great theme song and it's got a great voice cast. The early episodes, the stories were really good. Uh, the animation was really good in the beginning, and then it kind of went to shit later on. Um, but I think that a lot of people, again, with this show, they jump on the bandwagon. So I'm watching this, and I'm like, yeah, this was a really good episode. Nobody brings this one up. This was really cool. They, they jumped into some cool territory here. But most people don't do that because they just think, oh, well, it was in the 90s. Everything in the 90s was awesome because people were still fucking normal. And it was a part of that era when you had so many great cartoons. Not just Marvel, but DC. There was other cartoons. And yeah. And don't get me wrong. It is a classic. It is great. I do love this cartoon. I think it's better than all of... I think it's better than all of the X-Men movies. That's just how I feel. Um, but I do think that people... With particularly, I would say, with this show, with Batman, the animated series, I think people kind of feel the same way. Maybe uh, Spider-Man, the, the 90s Spider-Man to an extent, um, but there was also Spider-Man Unlimited in the 90s, so there you go. Um, people really just jump on that nostalgia train with this, because once you, once you dig deep, and that's why I love doing this, um, once you dig deep and, and you watch all the episodes and you go through everything with a fine tooth comb, most people don't jump into the territories that it needs to go into, at least in my opinion. I just wanted to start the review off with that because I, I just have always felt that that's one of these shows where people just, you know what I'm talking about, they put on those nostalgia goggles and it's just X-Men, but they don't really know much about it. They don't really dig deep enough to get into the nooks and the crannies of this show. That's just how I feel. But with that being said, before we jump into the rest of this, as all, before we get into the meat and the potatoes of the thing here, the good stuff, um, if anyone would like to send in a paid request such as this, you may do so down below in the description box. There is a link to my PayPal account. And no amount is too big. No amount is too small. It does not have to be just a movie review. It could be a TV series, a cartoon like this, comic book, video games, music, random thoughts, rant streams, commentaries, and anything in between. That's what the paid request is set up for. So again, as always, if anyone's interested, go ahead, send it in. I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. For those of you that have sent them in before, thank you. I greatly appreciate it. it. means you actually care about what I say and do here on the channel, and you guys want to see me try some different things. It does motivate me to keep wanting to make videos, so it's a win-win for everybody. You guys get more of the type of videos that you want to see me cover here on the channel. I keep making them, and at the end of the day, 
everybody goes home happy, just like they used to say at Blockbuster. So thank you. But X-Men, um, I'm not going to sing the theme song. <laughs> um, I think everybody knows the theme song at this point. Um, I'm just not going to do it. You're just going to have to get over it. All right, I lied. I am going to do it. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. But I will say that I think that the X-Men theme song is the greatest theme song in a cartoon. Sue me, shoot me, I don't care. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So get over it. But I absolutely love this cartoon. I always did. Um, I was born the year that the show premiered in 1992. Um, and I have enjoyed it pretty much ever since then. I don't remember... Well, that's not... I shouldn't say that. I did watch this as a kid. I watched this all the time as a kid. I remember specific episodes. Um, I had the Till Death Do Us Part, Part 1. I always thought that was kind of a weird... Till Death Do Us Part, Part 1. Till Death Do Us Part, Part 2. I always thought it was weird how they did that. But I had um, Till Death Do Us Part, Part 1 on VHS as a kid. It, uh, not the same tape, but I have another copy of that in the video store as over there, as I call it. But I do remember watching it on Fox Kids back in the day. I remember the Out of the Past specifically, with which had Lady Deathstrike, which I thought was really cool. I remember the episode with Iceman because he was only in one episode, which I was disappointed about because I love the character and I wish that we got to see more of him. I remember the Nightcrawler episodes. Um, that entire first season, I remember, because that was heavily fucking promoted back then. And the entire first season came out on video, and I remember going to the video store and seeing them and going to Toys R Us and seeing them as a kid and wanting to get all of them. The best thing about being an adult is, you know, you get a job and you save money and then you buy all the cool shit you couldn't get when you were a kid. So there you go. Um, you know, I remember trying to think the episode with Captain America, which I love one of my favorite episodes, especially from the, the later stuff. I remember when the first X-Men movie came out, they put it back on Fox kids and I was really excited. I remember when Disney got it, they would show it on ABC family. So it was great to watch those on there. I remember when all the DVDs came out, which are behind me here, I'm not going to show them, but I have them, but I love this cartoon. I always did ever since I was a kid. Um, but again, like I said, I think people, particularly with this show, they put on the nostalgia goggles because they don't really remember or they, they don't know about the all the episodes. Um, you know, because once you, once you start getting into even like the second season, once you get into the second season pretty much through the rest of the show. Yeah, there might be an episode here or there that people remember. They might remember a story arc like Beyond Good and Evil, which was a four-parter, or the, the Phoenix stuff, which was two multi-part episodes. But are people going to really remember the episode with Iceman besides me and you? No. Are people going to remember the Nightcrawler episodes? No. Are people going to remember Mojo Vision? No, which was really fun. I love that episode. Um, I don't know. I just have always felt that about this show. And I think that, again, a lot of a lot of the shows from this era, people just really put those nostalgia goggles on. And I've done multiple videos, streams, whatever about this stuff. You know, there's a difference between liking something or loving something and then just liking it or loving it for nostalgia's sake. I don't do that. I don't look to the past and, you know, say, oh, my God, you know, the 90s, it was it was great. And uh, I remember all this and I remember when the No, I, you know, I like to look back at it. It's nice to remember when this show was on. It's nice to remember when X-Men Evolution is, was on, which we'll talk about next. But I don't sit there and, and dwell on the 90s and I don't let it control my life. I like now because I have a house and I can put all this stuff in here and I can still watch these shows whenever I want on DVD. Even though the DVDs are fucked up, which we'll cover. Um, 
but you know, I don't look back to 1996 and you know wish that I was still back there like a lot of people. Do. I don't do that. I've never done that. Um, I mean, a lot of the stuff. I mean, come on, I got a fucking Power Rangers standy. I love this stuff, and and you know, yes, I, I'm so proud that I was able to experience all that firsthand. I'm glad that I was a part of that generation. Uh, but I really like being an adult, and I do adult things. But I, you know, it's nice to kick back and watch this stuff. It's it's entertainment, and good entertainment does not have an expiration date. So there you go. But. You know, again, digging really deep in, into these episodes, it's like, oh, you know, this was good. And I like when they did The Sanctuary. The Sanctuary was another one that I do remember when they went on the, the little asteroid thing and Magneto took all the mutants up into space and then Fabian Cortez was trying to kill them. Like, that was fun. Um, you know, the episode with Alpha Flight, I love. I remember watching that. I remember X Factor popped in there. It would have been nice if they were in there more. Um, you know, uh, Cyclops teaming up with his dad. You know, it's like there's some really good episodes in here that people don't talk about. Um, but that's just the nostalgia. You know, that's the putting the goggles on and pretending it's 1994. And, you know, 94 was a great year, but, you know, I'm, I like where I'm at now. When I was 94, I was a little dude and crawling around, and, you know, I, I like all this, just saying. But I, I'll, I'll end it with that. But, you know, this show is very important uh, for many reasons. This was really the first really successful Marvel show, because prior to this, I mean, you had Spider-Man, you had Hulk, you had Fantastic Four, you had... Iron Man in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, but the, a lot of those shows didn't last long. They were only maybe two, three seasons at the max, and then they just recycled the episodes to keep them going, but this show was on for five years. Um, I think, if I'm not, no, I think Spider-Man has more episodes. I think Spider-Man, which I will review at some point this year because it is the 30th anniversary, and then for Spider-Man Unlimited, it's the 25th anniversary, so I will talk about that as well. At, down the road, we have it's only January. We have a lot of ground to cover here. Um, I think Spider-Man had more episodes, but Spider-Man was only on for four years. X-Men was on for five years, so there you go. Um, and it was very, you know, unique and original. They... They took stories directly from the comics, which was nice, and then they kind of put their own stuff in there, especially after you got past like the, thir the the beginning of the third season. Once you got past the the Phoenix stuff, then they started kind of just doing their own thing, which we'll cover. Um, you know, it this show actually helped Marvel in a lot of ways because at the time. In the early 90s, Marvel wasn't doing so hot. They were going through some financial troubles and they were trying to make it work. And this show helped them kind of get out of that. And then you had that boom period of comics in the 90s when Marvel and DC were huge and their comics were everywhere. And then they crossed over. And then at the end of the 90s, it went straight down because they burst the bubble, as you all very well know at this point. It helped Fox Kids get started. This was one of the one of the shows that really got the network started because in those early years, it it didn't really do anything. Batman and X Men came on pretty much at the same time, I think a month apart, and really got that network going. And then some show called Mighty Morphin Power Rangers came on the year after, and then exploded that network. Which this show helped Power Rangers get started because. Uh, Margaret Loesch, who never gets talked about. Margaret Loesch is a very important woman in Hollywood, in children's television, in the Fox network, and she never gets brought up. She never gets talked about. She helped this show get on the air because they were trying to do something with X-Men, and it worked with this. And then she also got Power Rangers on the air because she believed in the product and she believed in Haim Saban and the rest they say is as history but you never hear people talk about her and she's a brilliant woman she, I believe she's still working in television in some capacity and her story needs to be told because she is a historical figure you, and you want to talk all this diversity and inclusion and all this bullshit well there were plenty of women 
that started all this that don't get talked about. And Margaret Loesch just happens to be one of them. So there you go. Um, and it was a huge show. This was a huge show. I remember as a kid, you know, this really got X-Men really big again. The year before the show came out is when they rebooted X-Men. The comic it was the they called it the blue team which i have a, i think i have the first issue somewhere and that was a huge deal jim lee came in fantastic artist redid all the characters and moved that comic forward and then this show came on and because of that i think volume two but is the technical number but a lot of people just call it the blue team because of that and this show x-men launched and helped get the movie made and everything else video games and everything came after it so it helped comics and x-men get bigger which is always the goal which is awesome um i remember again going to the video store and seeing the tapes which i have all the tapes in there the the amazing artwork on those tapes hell the dvds have great artwork too the problem is all the episodes are fucking out of order once you get uh to the third season which we'll talk about um I remember the toys blowing up, and I had a bunch of... I still have some somewhere, but I had a bunch of X-Men toys as, the, as a kid, and they were all based on the cartoons. Going back to video games, um, you know, X. there was a bunch of X-Men video games that came out, and then there was X-Men vs. Street Fighter and Marvel vs. Capcom, and they were based on the look in the cartoon. They used the voice cast in the cartoon for these video games, which was awesome. They crossed over with Spider-Man. Um, they had a comic book that was based on these episodes. I know they call it the kid books, but I love those. I have a bunch of those in various places around here. I love those comics. I love how they were based on the episode in the beginning, and then later they kind of got away from that, like the show here. Um but I I love that. I love I mean Pizza Hut. Fucking Pizza Hut did a X-Men promotion for a while. I think Hardy yeah, Hardy's and Roy Rogers did toys because I had some of those as a kid. That was the first time I heard of Avalanche. I'm like, who's Avalanche? Oh, he's a bad guy, and then he's in the cartoon. Um so I remember that stuff as a kid. And again, I know I just said the nostalgia guy. I'm just talking about f- history and facts what this show created, what this show, what came out of this show. Uh, I'm just speaking the truth as I always do. But that was all great to live through. And it's great, it's cool to look back on that. You know, it is, but I don't, that doesn't control my life. I know people, whether it's the the 80s or the 90s or whatever, now it's like the early 2000s. People are obsessed with the early 2000s. And it's like, okay, uh, we can stop with that. We We can try to move forward here instead of looking back. But, you know, this show was huge. Um, It did very well. You know, again, it was on for five years. If it didn't, it wouldn't have lasted as long as it did. One of the things that I really love about the first two seasons is they had kind of an overarching story. The plan was to do that for the entire run. But after the second season, Fox said, no more. We want more self-contained episodes or or multi-part episodes that just deal with that. We don't want an overarching story. I don't agree with that. I wish that they had kept that throughout the entire run because I love the first season how it is that overarching story and each episode weaves into the next and then it kind of builds up to that ending. The second season started to do it, but you could tell that once you got towards the end of the second season, they were getting away from that. Um, but I love those first two seasons, particularly because I think that the stories were the best in those. I love the overarching, uh, kind of narrative, you know, uh, story that they had where it all worked into each other. Like the first season, um, they were dealing with the Sentinels. So each episode led into them finding out more about the Sentinels and the last episode was them wiping them out. The second season had... Professor X and Magneto go away and the X-Men had to deal with everything on their own and they had to find out where they were and then they went and got them. The third season, they they did away with that because they wanted, Fox wanted more episodes on their own. Which, okay, I get that, but what, and I think that a lot of people that, that are hardcore 
about this like I am, who are passionate about this. Everybody talks about those first two seasons. Um, 13 episodes apiece, you didn't really need anything more with that, and everything flowed into one another, and it built up to something. They kind of got away, they got away with that later, and don't get me wrong, there's a lot of good episodes in the third, fourth, and fifth season, and the writing was still good, and the characters, but I think there was something missing from those that the first two seasons really had, and it's a shame that the powers that be and whatever thought, you know what, now nah, we need like more just like regular episodes. I think people really love that about this show. I think it was probably the first cartoon to do that, and it definitely influenced shows later because Buffy did the same thing, and you can't tell me that Joss Whedon, as much of a fucking prick that he is, didn't watch the X-Men cartoon and think, you know what, why don't we do that with this? You cannot tell me that that didn't happen. Um, the third season is kind of where the problem started because I don't know if it was the show was so popular that the workload was too much or the money wasn't there or what have you but the third season is when the animation issues start a lot of people bring up the animation issues now in some of the earlier episodes like Night of the Sentinels there's you can find them here on YouTube there's multiple versions of the episode because the show aired in October 92 as a sneak preview. Then, because there were so many issues with the animation, they went back, fixed it, re-aired the first two episodes in a completely different version. The version that it's on the DVD and the VHS is the second version, but I think somewhere I have the original version and it's night and day. And there's, again, YouTube videos here with comparisons and how things change and they looked and the errors and the issues. It's very fascinating. But the third season is when they, first of all, they stop airing the episodes in order. Now, once you get to that point, there's less of an arc, so it doesn't really matter. But me, I like to watch shows, movies, whatever, in the order that the people intended it. The the writers, the artists, the creators, whoever, they had a, a plan. This was their plan, and then the plan got fucked up for whatever reason. But animation got fucked up. Animation changed, especially once you get into the third or the, the fourth and the fifth season. Different companies did different episodes because one episode, the animation will be one way. The next, it'll be different, and then it goes back and forth. For the last six episodes because there was not supposed to be a season five. They ordered season five at the last minute. The first four episodes were done by by one group because they had time. The last six, Saban did it in-house because Saban did the music, who would later do Power Rangers, and it's night and day with the animation. Um, it's cheap. I, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. The last six episodes, the animation is really cheap. It looks horrible. Um, you could tell that they didn't give a shit. You could tell that they just wanted to get them out there. And it kind of suffers, especially in the last episode, which this last episode is the buildup of five years, and it's not really that good of an episode, to be perfectly honest. It's pretty lackluster. Um, but they started airing the episodes out of order. There were episodes in the third season that didn't air till the fifth season. Um, and the DVD presents them in the broadcast order. So the, the DVDs were split up into volumes. I don't know why they did it that way. But volume one, volume one is the first season and then the beginning of season two. Volume two is the rest of season two and the beginning of season three. And those are all in the correct production order. Volume three, four, and five go in the broadcast order and it's all dicked up. So when I watch them, I try to watch them in production order. One of these days, I keep forgetting to do it, I'm going to download <laughs> seasons 3, 4, and 5. I'm going to make my own sets where they're in proper order so I don't have to switch fucking DVDs every time an episode is out of order, which in that case, you, you are literally changing a disc every episode, which sucks. Um, but that's just the way they decided to do it. But... That came out uh, when the first Wolverine movie came out. They started putting those out. And they did Marvel, or when when Disney bought everything, they did that, Iron Man, and Fantastic Four, and the 60s Spider-Man cartoon. 
That's it. Um, in Europe, which the same people own the same shit, in Europe they released uh, Spider-Man from the 90s, Spider-Man Unlimited, The Hulk, The Avengers cartoon, Silver Surfer. All the other cartoons came out in Europe and not in America, and I, I don't get that. Um, would it be possible for a Blu-ray release? Yes, but for a show like this, it's going to be very expensive and they look at it, Disney looks at it as it's not worth the money. They just throw it on the network. But I have those DVDs. I love the artwork on them. I just wish that they weren't fucking lazy and they would have put them in the proper broadcast order. Um, if you go on Wikipedia and such, you can find the proper episode order. Um, but the DVDs go off of the broadcast order, which again, once you get to the third season, it kind of, it's like, eh, even though like it'll be the Phoenix saga and then it's all jumbled up and then Jean Grey is back in the show and then she's not in the show and then she's back in, then it's the dark Phoenix and it's confusing. Um, then there's episodes, like, Gambit's in episodes, and then he's not, and then he is, and then he's not, and then Rogue's there, and then she's not, and then they change the voice actors, and then it's a different person, and then it's the original. It gets confusing. Um, like I said earlier, there's only one episode with Iceman. I wish he was in more because I love the character. There's only a couple episodes with Nightcrawler. I wish there was more because I love the character. Cannonball, who I love, gets introduced in one of the last episodes and then you never see him again. I love that character. Um, it would have been cool to have Psylocke in there, but I guess because of her costume, which is weird because in the early stuff, Jean Grey looks like she's practically naked because they use like a flesh tone instead of yellow for her suit. So she looked like she was just walking around with the goodies covered up. At least that's what I always thought as a kid because I'm perverted. I don't know. Rogue's ass changes. Like in the early episodes, Rogue's ass is huge and then she's got no ass at all. What the fuck? Um, but I'm now I'm just being a smart ass. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I do love this show. It was great to rewatch it. I watched it uh, in 2022 for the 30th anniversary and watching it again this year I just I enjoy it more and more and I love getting into the you know the non-popular episodes. Uh, I, I guess like the popular stuff would be the Night of the Sentinels because that was the pilot. Um, the Dark Phoenix stuff, the Phoenix because well there was the Phoenix Saga, then there was the Dark Phoenix. People remember those. People remember um, the Out of the Past because that aired in prime time. Actually, they did it was. They aired that and Power Rangers in primetime in the summer of 94. And I believe I watched that as a kid, if I'm not mistaken. Um, little little me watching that. I think I watched that. Anyway. Um, but there's a lot. Like all the episodes with Colossus. I wish he was in more. I like the stuff with Omega Red because he was always one of my favorite villains. Um uh, all the Wolverine-centric episodes, like where he goes up against Alpha Flight and then he reunites with Maverick and Silver Fox. It's like, that's the stuff I really like. The episode where he goes to Japan and he meets the Silver Samurai. The one where he goes with the Inuits and Sabretooth shows up. The episode where Storm becomes the leader of the Morlocks. You know, Mojo Vision was fun because Mojo is such a crazy, batshit, insane villain, and I wish that we got to see more of him. So there's a lot of really good... I mean, if you want to get deeper, um, you know, the episodes where Cyclops reunites with his dad, and Cyclops goes back to his old orphanage, Rogue goes back to her home um, and finds out things, and Gambit goes back to the bayou. I always like that. The episodes with Storm, where she's fighting the Shadow King... All the time travel episodes were awesome with Bishop, because I love Bishop, and Cable. Um, there was one where uh, in the future, or Xavier gets killed, so the X-Men never existed, but Storm and Wolverine get married, and they're fighting together. That was fucking cool, and Storm's got the badass mohawk. There's so many great episodes. The last episode is really lackluster. You could tell that they had exerted all the money. They were just trying to get it out there. The scene when Xavier's telling them how much he loves them, 
and they're all crying. That's nice. And then that last shot of everyone in Magneto is really cool. But it's a it's a lame episode, to be honest. Um, the episode with Captain America, the one where you find out Mr. Sinister was with Jack the Ripper. That was kind of cool because it was in the past and it had none of the X-Men. Um, a lot of really good stuff throughout this show. I know they're doing a sequel. I don't give a fuck because it, it's not even out yet and it's already woke because the girl that played Jubilee who did the voice of Claire Redfield in the Resident Evil game, she said, well, I'm white and I'm not going to voice an Asian character. Fuck off. Who cares? So that they already made that stupid. So I will not be watching that. Uh, there's a few books out there on the making of the show. I would definitely like to pick those up at some point. Um... I have all the VHS tapes. I treasure those. I, I love the artwork on those, especially the early, the earlier ones that had like the comic book style art. I don't know why they stopped making them because they put out the entire first season, then they put out the premiere of season two, and then they put out the Phoenix Saga. You can't tell me that those tapes weren't moving back then. You can't tell me they weren't selling because I used to see those everywhere when I was a kid. Again, whether I was at Blockbuster or Walmart, or Toys R Us as a kid. They were everywhere. So those tapes were definitely sewn. I don't I don't know if it just got too expensive, or they said fuck it, or there was disagreements. But those tapes are awesome. I treasure those. I'm, I'm very proud to own all of the X-Men tapes. Universal put some out because they bought Polygram, and when the, movie, when the first movie came out, they were putting them out on VHS. And there's a couple of like random DVD collections. I have one of them. And then when Disney bought everything, because they're a bunch of fucking Nazis, they put like a random Wolverine disc, and then they started doing them by volume. But anyway. But I love this cartoon. It's always been one of my favorites, but I'm a real fan. I watch every episode, and I... I dig deep into it, and I enjoy it, and hopefully for the next 30 plus years, I will continue to enjoy it. We'll see what happens. But anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed my review of X-Men, the animated series or whatever you want to call it. And next up, which was also part of the paid request, X-Men Evolution, which I love that show as well. Can't wait to, to jump in and talk about that, because that one I haven't watched in forever. So I definitely look forward to digging in and getting some more X-Men on here on the channel. So we'll see you guys on the next one. Later. The next one, not the X one. I'm not making X puns for everything. I don't do that. <laughs> Later.